Hey, hey everybody and welcome back to another board meeting. Today we're doing another top 10 list. Now a few months back I did my top 10 two player only board games. I'm going to kind of stick with that theme of player count except today I'm doing my top 10 games that are best at their max player count. So if that game allows four or five players, I like that game best at five players. Now I'm not going to be ranking these on how much I like these games. I'm going to be ranking them on how important it is to me to have that max player count, or at least very close to it. Uh, let's go to the number 10. So the least important one for max player count. This is a classic game at this point. It plays seven players. This is Seven Wonders. Now this is this card drafting civilization game where you're going to be taking a hand of cards, picking one, passing them around. And why I like it at these high player counts is because it adds no time to the game. Which is the problem with most games at playing them at high player counts is it adds so much more time so it has to have a reason to add those extra players for it. This one, whether you're playing it at three players, whether you're playing it at seven players, it takes the same amount of times. So the game really doesn't change because you're just going to be picking a card, laying it down, passing it, and you're just going to be comparing with your neighbors. You don't worry about the other people across the table just your neighbors for this game. But I figure if we have seven players, seven people wanting to play a game, Seven Wonders is a great option for that because it adds no time, whether you're playing at seven players or three players. does not matter for this game. So I, I enjoy it playing at that max player count for Seven Wonders, but of course it's number 10, so it's the least important on this list, but still high recommendation for me. Going to number nine. Number nine is a very, very big game. This is Gloomhaven. This is the granddaddy of all dungeon crawl games. And this is this is kind of D&D the board game to me, because uh, you're going to be leveling up your characters and you have different classes of characters. You have your mages, your warriors, whatever like that. Why? And it goes from one to four players. It's a good solo game. It's a good two player, three player game. I like it best at four players because you have four different characters running the game with you. Kind of like D&D where you want like several different things. You want your clerics to heal people. You want your warriors, your your barbarians to be up front battling people. You want your mages to be sending out spells. You want rogues to be sneaking around doing whatever. That's why I kind of like Gloomhaven is because you get a mix match of all those different characters doing different things, kind of working together. Like, oh, he's really good at healing. So you stand back, heal me while I'm going in for battle. That's why I like it at the max player count because you get such a wide range of characters then to be involved in these missions. So going to number eight, uh, we went from the biggest game on this list to the smallest game on this list. Number eight is Colt Super Express. This is the filler card game version of that Colt Express game, that older game. And this plays from, I think, three to seven players. I like it best at seven players. This is just a chaotic random game. You're going to be programming your movements before the round starts. And you're going to be moving around these trains. You're trying not to get knocked off the train. And you program your movements before the round starts. And then once the round starts, you reveal these cards one at a time and do those actions. You can move up the train, down the train, go to the next train. You can shoot people. You can turn around. And it's just chaos and why I like it best at that seven player count because the uh, chaos gets enhanced with the more players. And it only takes 15, 20 minutes, even with seven players, especially if everybody knows what they're doing. So yes, love it at seven players. It's not very good at the three player. I think you can play at three players. I would not recommend it. So yes, uh, number eight, Colt Super Express, going to number seven is another very chaotic game. This is QE. This is kind of this party game where you're bidding. You're blind bidding against everybody else. You're playing as countries and you're bidding, you're auctioning off these different companies, trying to buy them. And you can bid anywhere from $1 to one quadrillion dollars. It does not matter. You can bid whatever you want. And at the end of the game, the player who spent the most money loses uh, automatically. And then the next player who's got the most points from those companies that they bought ends up winning. Why I like it at five is kind of the same reason why I like Colt Super Express at max player count. QE is good at five. Uh, it's not very good at three, I don't think. 
four is okay. Five is where it's at, though, because it's just... Uh, there's going to be one person who's auctioning off these... Uh, he's going to be the auctioneer for that specific round, and he gets to see what everybody bids for that round. So you get kind of an idea of what everybody's bidding, because that auctioneer gets passed around each each different round. And <laughs> the the disparity between people's bids is just funny to watch. Because someone might be bidding thousands. Another player might be bidding uh, millions. Another player might be bidding trillions. You, It's just nuts. This game, it shouldn't work. The How this game works, it shouldn't work. But somehow it actually does. And I like it at that five player count. Uh, going to number six. Number six is another five player game. This is Space Space. And why I like Space Space, this is uh, a dice rolling game where you're going to be collecting resources that are on these rocket cards that are in front of you. But when everybody else is taking their turn, you're also getting those resources. And a lot of times towards the end of the game, you're getting a lot more resources on other people's turns rather than your own. So that's why I kind of like it at that max player count is because you're going around the table and they're taking their turns, but you're still involved in the game. And you're like, yes, you know, getting all these resources, finally it's your turn. Then you can spend those resources to get better rocket cards. So yeah, this is a game, even though at the five player count, it, it's a while between your turns, you're still doing stuff on other people's turns. So that's why I like it at that max player count. Let's go to number five. Number five is a game a lot of people might not, might disagree with me on, and a lot of people probably haven't even played this way. Uh, this is Unmatched, and everybody thinks of Unmatched as this one-versus-one uh, miniature card-battling game. But what I like to do, and my group as a whole, we play this game almost exclusively at this point as a two-versus-two two game, a four-player game, because you're going to be playing as a team battling each other, playing cards, and it's the last team standing wins. We've even played this game as an all versus an all. We'll take four players and an all versus all last last character standing wins. This is a game I really like and very seldom played as a one versus one game anymore because everybody wants to play it, so it's just easier to get at the table at a four player count for for us. Yes, unmatched. And I think most people probably don't play that way, but for my group, we love it. Uh, going to number four. Number four is Citadels. Citadels is this character drafting game where every, each round you're going to be drafting characters. And these characters have different special abilities. With the ultimate goal of building these buildings. You're going to be collecting coins and building buildings. And I think it's the first person to get seven or eight buildings built. Whatever it ends up being that triggers the end game. Uh, and you're... What's really fun about Citadels is drafting those character cards and using their special abilities. You know, some will some characters steal money from other characters. Some characters will car kill other characters for that specific round. Uh, there's characters that are really good at building. Different characters do different things. It's a fun game. And why I like it at the high player count is because more of the characters are used when you're drafting. And you could put any kind of social deduction game in here. Because Citadels is kind of a social deduction game. But you could put any social deduction game. I almost put Avalon in here. You could put Secret Hitler. Any of those. Because social deduction games generally are much better at the higher player counts. Because they unlock more things to do. More characters. More abilities. In general, when you're talking about social deduction game. But I did pick Citadels for my number four. Going to number three. Number three is a game that only plays up to four. And Citadels goes up to seven, I believe. Uh, this number three goes up to four only. And this is the newest game on this list. This is uh, excuse me, uh, Dune Imperium. It's actually right here. Uh and pretty much you're you you are pretty much forced to play a three or four player game in this, because in a one player game you play with two dummy characters, in a two player game you play with one dummy character, and then a th and then you can play a three player game. Why I like it at four is because this is a worker placement game, and the board tightens up a lot when you play a four player game compared to a three player game. In a four player game, the tension's a lot more. There's a lot more tension in the game. Like I hope they don't take my spot. Because there's a lot more open spots in the three-player game 
than compared to the four player game. So yes, I love Dune Imperium at the four player count. It just adds more tension. That conflict at the end of each round is even more tense. Really like this game. Really, really like it at four player. It's okay at three players. Uh, going to number two. Number two is a game, It again, it only plays up to four players. You can play it at two player. You can play at three player. Four players where it shine. This is Blood Rage. Uh, I don't own this game anymore because I played this game at two player. Hated it. Did not like it at all. We played this game at three player. Tried it again at three player. It was better, but I did not like it still. To the point I actually gave it to a friend because they, they enjoyed it a lot more than I did. So I'm like, well, you can, you can have it. Then they started bringing it to game nights and we started playing at four players. Now I love this game. Blood Rage is amazing at four player game, at a four player count. This is kind of this card drafting game and you're going to be playing as these Viking clans and you're going to be spreading across this board doing kind of this area control sort of battling game. And at the end of each round, this, this meteor or whatever happens, Valhalla or whatever, I can't remember what it's called right now, blows up a region. And the, it just gets tighter and tighter, and the game is very tight at four players, and that's kind of what I like about it. Yes, it's it's a great game at four players. At two and three players, I wouldn't touch the game. Maybe three players, you can convince me. Two players, I will never play it again. Uh, yes, but now it's become, it's in my top 50 games of all time now, and at a two-player count, it wouldn't be in my top 400, I don't think. So, yeah. So let's go to the number one. The number one might be the most controversial pick on this list because a lot of people probably don't like it at the max player count. And I am talking about Scythe. And the base game plays one to five players. I'm not even talking about that. I'm adding the expansion that makes it a seven player game. I like this game at seven players. I uh, Because the board becomes so much tighter of a space at that seven player count. If you're playing three players, it's an okay game, but it changes the game completely. You have a wide open space if you're playing three players. You can go kind of do whatever you want. Nilly willy, go over here, not worrying about too much. In a seven player game, that that board shrinks so much where you're it's so tense the entire game. And that's what kind of what I like about a lot of these uh, the top three games was that the tension that it brings because the game's so much tighter at that higher player count. They're, they're vying for these spots. So it's like if you're if you're playing that seven player game in Scythe, you have to watch all six of those players trying to calculate where they can attack you and how you can maneuver to get to certain areas for that being such a tight board at seven players. I love it. At at three and four players, it's it's fine as well, but it changes the game more from that tension to just that efficiency engine that Scythe is and collecting resources, and you don't have to worry too much about the other players. That's why I like it at seven, at seven players. It's awesome, in my opinion. And we'll play it at six occasionally, but seven is what we really like. Uh, but that will complete this entire list. Uh, thank you guys all for watching. If you did enjoy this video, make sure to like and subscribe to see more weekly content from me, Shane, at the board meeting in the future. I hope you all have an amazing day and take care, everyone.